the greenhouse effect is a natural phenomenon that allows the global surface temperature to be 15 degrees Celsius, it would be minus 15 if there was no greenhouse effect. It is due to a number of compounds present in the atmosphere, which we're going to cover in this introduction. When a compound is uh, released on the surface, it will be transported into the atmosphere with different processes turbulence, wind, convection, and it may be destroyed by several processes, chemical reactions, photochemical reactions in the highest atmosphere, and also it may be deposited or absorbed by the ocean and the continental surfaces. In both reservoirs, which are the continents and the ocean, there may be a local cycle and the compound will be uh, transformed and transported. The interactions between the atmosphere, the continental surfaces, and the ocean form by geochemical cycles. There are many compounds in the atmosphere and therefore they must be listed and classified. Here we have the duration of time uh, in the atmosphere vertically and horizontally the uh, spatial impact. The compounds are in the middle, in, on the right hand side, the ones with the long duration of life and they can be transported uh, in the atmosphere and they have a planet impact. And on the left-hand side, we have the very short life cycle compounds that play a role in the active chemistry of the atmosphere. In the center, the compounds uh, are nitrogen, sulfur, carbon, aerosol, oxides, uh, and they play a role on the regional level. So we can discriminate between environmental problems. In red, most greenhouse effect gases and greenhouse effect is a planet issue. And in the middle, we have the compounds that play a role in the atmospheric pollution. Now, the tropospheric ozone is an exception with an intermediate duration and water vapor playing a role in natural greenhouse effect. As shown here, we see that water vapor represents 60% of the uh, natural greenhouse effect. That is the first gas for greenhouse effect. And water vapor has a very specific cycle, evaporation above the continents, above the, the uh, oceans, transportation into the atmosphere, condensation, and rain is a very short cycle. The duration of life of a uh, water molecule is approximately 11 days, and there is it's slower when there are infiltrations into the aquifers. But uh, water plays an essential role with this very quick cycle. Something else which we don't control, we don't control the water vapor cycle as we can try and uh, achieve with the other compounds. And in the rest of the uh, presentation, I will no longer talk about the water vapor, only if I'm referring to the uh, climatic retroaction of water vapor in the climate changes. The second gas is CO2, 26%, and then followed by ozone, methane, and nitrous oxide. This is when there is a clear sky, but there are also clouds which play a role in the uh, greenhouse effect when they are present. Now, let us look at the evolution of compounds, uh, greenhouse effect compounds other than water vapor, CO2, methane, N2O on the left-hand side of the slide. And we see that ever since 1750, concentrations have increased quickly, more quickly so in the 20th century and 21st century. Methane has been multiplied by two and nitrous oxide has increased by 15%. Right-hand side, we see the fluorocarbonate compounds, the CFCs, the uh, concentrations of which do not evolve so quickly because some of them have been controlled by the Montreal Protocol, which in the 80s decided to regulate the uh, emission and production of these uh, compounds to avoid them being released into the stratosphere. They've been replaced by HFCs, the concentration of which increased. They no longer destroy the ozone, but they still have a role to play in the greenhouse effect. These uh, pictures are very important because the national protocol is well prepared with substitution product and this shows that the uh, policy can be successful and help reduce the concentration of uh, greenhouse effect gases in the atmosphere. Now, the certain number of these greenhouse effects has increased, uh, causing an additional greenhouse effect, which uh, adds itself to the natural greenhouse effect, and CO2 is the first anthropic greenhouse effect a greenhouse effect gas, followed by uh, nitrous oxide uh, and uh, methane. This uh, impact has happened very quickly, and it increases the essential forcing uh, that uh, leads to uh, climatic changes. Look at the emission and look at the 
released masses and the industrial sectors that contribute. CO2, 95% is the biggest mass. The other gases, 5% for methane and almost nothing for the others. And we see the various industries combustion of coal, gas and oil, energy production, industry, transportation, residential and tertiary users. But we cannot limit ourselves to the masses because if we look at the impact of each of these areas on the uh, climatic change, we need to convert emission of other gases in CO2 equivalent because not all gases have the same capacity to trap the, the rays and lead to uh, greenhouse effects. So we need some kind of conversion factor. factor. The most frequently used is the uh, PRG in French or um, the uh, warming global warming capacity. And uh, relatively to the CO2, one kilo of a gas has an equivalent in uh, CO2. So PRG tr translates the quantity of gas released in terms of greenhouse effect and not only the mass. Take methane. The 100-year PNG is 28, so one kilo of methane has a 28 times greater impact on the greenhouse effect than uh, CO2. There are other alternatives for conversion factors, but I work with the PRG. And if we look at the uh, graph again of those gases that contribute to the greenhouse effect, we see that we change the pie chart at the top. The uh, combustion sectors only represent a smaller share, and we have now other sectors such as agriculture, which produces methane, extraction and distribution of fossil fuels, biomass, and even waste management. In the power struggle between the greenhouse effect gases, CO2 now represents 56%, methane 32%, and then 2 6% and other gases 6%. So the take-home message here from this slide is that if we want to really look at the uh, how to reduce greenhouse effect gases to reduce the climatic changes. We should not look only at CO2, but also at the other gases and those industry that produce those gases, which is not limited to fossil fuel combustion. All in all, between 1750 and 2011, we have uh, the so-called integrated radiative forcing, the flow of energy, additional energy trapped in the lower atmosphere due to the greenhouse effect gases, 2.8 watts with the uh, sharing that we have seen in the previous slide, whereas aerosols and clouds have a negative forcing, they cool down the climatic system. We see a big uncertainty on the green uh, bar. And if we uh, add both with the uh, high uncertainty and low uncertainty, we have the total anthropic level 2.8 watts per square meter of increase due to total anthropic forcing between 1.1 and 3.1 of additional gases uh, trapped in the atmosphere. We also see that the natural system contributes partly but this cannot explain everything that is happening in terms of radiative forcing in the atmosphere. 